How is it going everybody? Chaos Gamer here and yes we are back with some more My Hero Ultra Rumble and in today's video we are going to be looking at a top 18 list with characters that are at the highest win rate versus characters that are the lowest win rate. Now just because that character is at that lowest win rate doesn't mean necessarily that you are not going to be winning games. It's just that you have a low chance of winning those games compared to a character that is higher on the list according to the devs though, not according to me. So that means that let's not waste any more time. Let's blow this shit right the hell up. And ladies and gentlemen, let us get started with today's video. Now, a couple of things I do want to mention is that number one, I will also be explaining why I think personally that character does have that win rate due to my experience playing the game. And number two is if we go to the next slide is that the data has been collected from October 12th to October 19th, meaning that this happened after the patch notes and before Aizawa released. Which, if anything, I don't think Aizawa should be on the list at all. But I digress from that. Let's get started with the list. So at number 18, we do have Uraraka with a 14.46 win rate. Now, the reason why I think personally she does have that win rate is because of one, she's able to use her beta skill. And two, I think that's it really. Like the beta skill is what carries this character right here. Just for how close she could get to you, it makes it to where like, yo, you're basically spinning in a tornado with her. And until she feels like dropping you, you're going to be there for a little bit. I'm going to be honest. And also what's good about the skill as well is that let's say, for example, Bakugo activates his gamma skill, the one that twirls or like he spins around, you could cancel that out. With either as well, you could cancel that out and it just makes it like it was a neutral clash and that's it. Now I would say that the alpha also helps her with movement, but sadly the alpha is bad right now to the point that the devs have announced that they do have to fix the alpha, which we have been waiting for a while now. Hopefully they do fix it sometime soon, but yeah, I can't give Uraraka that credit. And then the trap is just... I, I think unless you're like a hardcore Uraraka player, I doubt that the trap would help any other player that doesn't really use Uraraka like that to get that high win rate, which she, she, she's at 14%. Now, number 17, we do have Cementos. I would have thought Cementos was a little bit higher, but he is sitting at a 15.2 win rate. The reason why I think personally he does have that win rate is because of one, the revive. It just comes so clutch, man, to make it where it could turn the ties of battle. But also the downgrade of that is let's say the opponent is standing next to the Bakugo. They could be inside there and just finish off the opponent right there. Because when you revive, you don't have any iframes at all. You are going to get hit frame one. Once you do that up thing, goodbye. You're cooked for free again. Especially if it's a strike character at that high level. But number two... Why I think uh, Cementos has that high win rate is just the amount of walls that he's able to create or towers that he makes to make sure that the enemies are not hitting him unless they go up with him. Which at that point, I think it's safe to say that we could call Cementos a villager from Minecraft due to the amount of stuff that man is able to build. It's insane the amount of stuff that he throws with his rocks. It's just like, yeah, this man was in Minecraft. He isekai once he died into my hero. And that's when he became a pro hero and all that good stuff. Number 16, we do have Cementos sitting at a 15.4 win rate. Now, the reason why I think Cementos is here Maybe I should stop saying that the reason why I think, because you guys already know I am going to explain the reason. But I'll just say it one more time. The reason why I do think Cementos is here is because of the fact that he is able to get away from situations relatively fast unless the opponent does follow them. And it helps to where he can carry his allies to get away as well. What's a cool thing about Compressor as well that I think it gives him a high win rate is that when he is able to block the opponents that are using their range alpha skills, because sometimes people don't know. I had an instance in the live stream the other day that I recorded that my teammate who was Bakugo, he was spamming the alpha on Compress, but he didn't know that Compress activated his shield and it made it to where that Bakugo got cooked for free. So that is a underrated skill that I think that gives Compress players that win rate that they have right there. But if they know, it's just gonna be like, all right, I'm gonna wait until the Compress gets away with the shield and then I'm gonna attack him right after. Which then in that case, the Compress could be like, oh, I'm out of here. Actually, now that I think about it, I think Compress should be a little bit higher on this list because of the fact that he has so much utility to get away from the opponent and make it to where that the opponent can't really hit him for a while. But at number 15, we do have Toga with a 15.48% win rate. I think the beta definitely carries her where she is like the same thing as Uraraka. She could just, you know, go around, hit you crazy. But I think that Uraraka's beta skill is more better than the Toga because Toga does last for a short time. I think it's like two hits and that's it. And then, yeah. Another thing that does give Toga that high win rate as well is because of the fact that she is able to transform literally into any character in the game and makes it to where that she could copy not just their quirks, but their special action as well. So let's say the number one character was Ida, right? Even though I don't know who's number one right now. She will just copy Ida and make it to where that she's using the same skills that Ida has 
and then she just pops off with Ida for a little bit. That's it. Or another character, let's say, like Bakugo. She could just copy Bakugo and make it to where she's super offensive now and cook for free. And an underrated skill that I think that Toga has that makes it to where she could cook is definitely the knives. She throws so many knives. It's crazy. And if you pair it up with a strike skill to make it to where it does even more damage, yo, watch out. Make sure you have full shield because if you don't, this Toga is going to hit you for a lot of damage. So number 14, now we do have Kaminari with a 15.93% win rate. Kaminari is very annoying with the paralysis, but I think what holds this character back from the paralysis on his alpha scale is just the short range that it has. Kaminari has to be super close to try to activate that in the first place. And I just feel like, why would you even activate that skill when you could just be focusing more on the beta, which is the big, like, shield that he has of electricity. And it just makes it to where that it creates more combo opportunities for your team. And two... It's just, it does damage. It really does a lot of damage. And then his gamma skill is not really much to talk about. You know, it's just a charge, bam, like that. I would say Ida has one of, I mean, not Ida, sorry. I would say that Kirishima compared to Kamen, Kamenari. Okay, I was messing up the Ks. The Ks are messing me up today. But Kirishima has a way better charge skill going forward than I would say Kamenari does. But Kamenari backs up with the damage that he is able to do with the special action. But it's only a limited time and it really doesn't last that long. All right, now... We are at number 13, which is Momo Yayorozu. I think Momo Yayorozu is definitely an underrated character. I don't know why I'm saying her old government name. I should have just said Momo the second time. But you know what? We keep it rolling. But with that alpha skill, man, that thing has such wide range. It's crazy. I feel like you have to dodge twice just to make sure that you escape from that range. Either that or you have to use Bakugo's like, special action to try to fly away from that because there's no way man if you're in her range with that damn alpha skill you're getting cooked for free that's it and also what's good about her is definitely that damn shield that she charges around with it just gives her eye frames that she does no damage at all but i would say that's kind of like it doesn't really last that long so it makes it to where like oh we just can just stand back wait until she's done using it and then go after her. But she does use it multiple times, so I think that does cover for her as well. But again, I feel like you can just use the same strat. Just wait until she's done using the shield and then attack her straight afterwards. And then the goodie bag skill that she has, I think that's a special action or that is the gamma skill. I don't really think that's good at all, to be honest. And then the cannon she has, not really that good. You can just back up from that and you're chilling for free. Number 12, we do have Vine. Vine's alpha skill is just crazy, man. Oh, I haven't been seeing the percentages, sorry. Momo is at a 16.27% and then Vine is at a 16.29%. And with Vine, that alpha skill just goes so far, man. Oh my god. I swear, that could reach the ends of the earth the way she stretches out those vines. It's insane, man. Like, you try to use your skills to run away, unless you're Ida, you're not running away from that. She is going to hit you with that regardless. So I think the best way is that you just got to fight this woman, that's it. And then another thing in her utility that makes it to where she is a very good character is the revive. Again, revives just come in clutch, man. And with the fact that she wraps them around a little shield as well, that it gives them iframes, they're basically chilling for a little bit. So they have two options, the run away or go help the vine fight. Which vine doesn't really have mobility, that's what lacks from her. So if anything is like, ah, I can't really run away and try to heal. I got to help the vine because she's getting cooked and most likely she's going to die. So that makes it to where like, eh, you know, number 11, which I'm going to tell you guys right now. I do not believe this character should be number 11 at all. Ida with a 16.54%. Ida, I feel like he's cracked, man. You, I, I might not be crazy. I think you guys agree. Ida should be top three in my personal opinion. This man combos you with the alpha. He hits you with the beta, which, mind you, tracks and does damage. And then he makes it to where that he can run far away from the opponent. And also, he can help the allies that are knocked down, carry them on the back, and just do the same thing that I mentioned earlier, which is run away across the map and make sure that they get rushed for free. I think Ida is a very annoying character, and he counters some of the ranged characters that are in this game right now. I think, like, including Bakugo as well. Bakugo and Shoto, he just gets close to them, cook for free. That's it. Number 10, we do have Kendall. I thought Kendall would be a little bit lower, but I could see the utility with Kendall being that the shield that she has. The same thing as Mr. Compress, where she could block the range attacks and it makes it to where like, ah, damn, I can't shoot at this girl. I have to wait until she's done using the shield, which creates opportunities that make it to where one, your teammates can run away, 
or two, it makes it to where that you can res the ally while she is blocking those hits. But really, what's stopping the enemy team from trying to get closer, it makes it to where that they could just do damage to you right there while you are trying to res your ally. But again, I thought Kendall would be a little bit lower. I did not expect it to be this high number 10, especially over Vine and Momo. Ida too, that's crazy. Over Ida, that, now that's insane. I'm gonna change my mind. That's insane that Kendall is above Ida. What the hell? But at number 9, now we do have Dobby with a 17.21%. Dobby with the buff is just crazy, man. Makes it to where that he can take more hits now. The alpha just tracking and doing a lot of damage. He has iframes when he activates the beta skill. So he could basically do two things, which reses allies or protect the allies to heal. Or he could just like peek out a little bit and then activate the alpha. Then go back in and makes it to where that he can stay there. While the enemy team can't get close to him unless they do want to risk going into the same space at him but then what's stopping Dobby from being in the corner and you trying to go in and then he goes out again to make it to where that oh you got to step out and take that damage again now and then I don't really think the traps are that good unless you are trying to finish off the opponent I'm not a trap kind of guy I don't like traps at all that Uraraka that's what's the sell for her and Dobby that's what's not the sell for him too that, that makes me like ah, I don't want to touch them at all all right, now we are with the eights now. Number eight is Shoto Todoroki with a 17.34% win rate. Another character I think should be higher, but I can see why Shoto is there as well. So with Shoto, his alphas, they go far. I feel like they go farther than Bakugo. And as him being a strike character, of course they're going to do a lot of damage. And then the protection that he does have with the beta as well is good. But sometimes I think it's not that good either because you could shoot through it majority of the time. Majority of the time, you're shooting through it. So it makes it to where, like, damn, that sucks. Yeah, Soto's gonna get cooked for free, and any character that he's trying to protect in that shield is gonna get cooked for free as well. So it's a double entendre and a risk factor as well, whether you wanna be using that shield or not. And then what definitely makes this character super annoying is definitely the gamma skill. Every time he skates around you, just know, majority of the time, if you're near that, you're getting frozen. And sometimes, if the team is actually coordinated, it makes it to where that they can do a quick little combo while you are frozen. So you gotta watch out, man. You don't wanna be near that as well. So yeah, if anything, I say the alpha and the gamma is what makes it to where the Shoto has that high win rate. Now let's go to number seven, number seven, seven. Damn, I was about to say like, yo, let's go to lucky seven at this point. Um, it is Shigaraki with a 17.57% win rate. Now Shigaraki, very annoying character. Kind of similar to Dobby, but different because definitely with the alpha, it's like, it goes long range and it just continuously keeps hitting you. As long as you're stuck in that part that he is like throwing his alphas, you're going to be taking damage. And another thing as well is with the beta, I think it is. I don't really remember Shigaraki's skill like that, but it's like the wide range that he's able to have similar to Dobby's. That just continuously hits you no matter what. So let's say, for example, that you are like the opponent is trying to come close to you and your Shigaraki. You just activate that, and as soon as they land on that, they're gonna take residual damage, spam the alpha, most likely they're gonna get knocked for free. And if anything, what I think holds this character back is definitely the gamma. Not that good, I'm gonna be honest. Just dragging your hand to the ground and then makes it to where the opponent could just shoot you for free while you are coming towards the opponent. It just creates bad opportunities for you, super bad opportunities. Number six, we do have Bakugo with a 18.33% win rate. I am a Bakugo fan to the day I die. I think it should be number one. Personally, me, I think it should be number one, no matter what. But just like, I, I don't know if it's like before the nerf, would he be number one? But after the nerf, I still think he's still the same. The only thing is that he's doing less damage now. But let's talk about the, the qualities of Bakugo, what's good, what's bad about him. Alpha definitely good, does a lot of damage. And with the strong aim assist we have in the game right now, it's just free city shots, man. No matter what, you see an opponent, you don't even have to probably just look at the L3 or whatever button the Xbox is for when you are trying to look around, trying to shoot the opponent. You just let that thing fly. R2, 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 R2. But what I say what's bad about the character is one, definitely the grenades. I do not like the grenades at all. And the gamma makes it to where like, yeah, the gamma can hit a lot of people and it can hit hard too with the final hit. You could miss a little bit and then hit him with like almost close to the final hit and it'll still do a lot of damage. But sometimes it could just miss and it's just like, damn, that makes it to where the opponent can just hit you for free now once you are done. Because it does take a second for Bakugo to get back into that normal stance and then just do some other stuff that he wants to do, like maybe fly away or make it to where he wants to activate his other action skills. So yeah, you definitely got to be careful with the gamma right there. But another thing that makes this character good for sure, as I mentioned a few seconds ago, the special action. 
definitely makes it to where that he can run away from opponents or chase down opponents as well. So if, he's basically the Grim Reaper. You are not escaping this man when he wants to kill you with that special action. He's going to hunt you down. And if you um, stack it with the Rapid Quirk, you can make it to where that they are like faster. Now, Baku goes faster and he'll just go to the ends of the earth. Now, number five, we do have Kirishima with a 19.2% win rate. Kirishima is just crazy, man. He is absolutely crazy. I had a subscriber when we were playing together. He was just clutching it up for us when I was using Aizawa, which me using Aizawa was my darkest days. But seeing Kirishima pop off brightened me up a little bit, and then it went to a lot once he won. Once he won oh, my God, I can't speak today. Jesus Christ. I know I haven't slept, but damn, come on. Let me at least get this video over with. But um, it's just making a smile to my face. Basically, we're going to say Kirishima when he does go crazy. But now let's explain why Kirishima does go crazy. So one of the things is definitely the alpha makes it to where that he could just chug at the opponent and just hit them continuously. The other thing with the beta is that, yo, the beta, if you land that, that sends them flying like crazy. And it does a lot of damage as well. I think Kirishima was like one of the few defensive types after Midoriya got nerfed. That could do a lot of damage, man. That man does damage on that beta like nobody's business. And since it got buffed as well to make it to where it got an extra charge. Oh, man. You got to see people spamming the living soul out of that. Or you probably already seen people been spamming that. Because it's been a week since the patch notes have been out, right? And people are going crazy with Kirishima right now. But I feel like even before the patch notes, Kirishima was just that good as well. And with the Gamma, definitely a good skill. But with that skill, you have to be very technical about it. Because it's just like... You're, you're basically any WWE wrestler, you're on the top rope and you're just slamming down the opponent. But you want to make sure that the opponent is not looking at you at all. Or you're just aiming like right below them and just like, man, get it in for free. And it backs them off as well. So it creates opportunity to where like Kirishima could just, you know, get away. Or it makes it to where that like, Kirishima could go a little bit more crazy. And the teammates that he's with as well. So yeah, I agree that Kirishima being number five. Now, we are going to be looking at the final four. So let's see what we have in store. I don't know who the final four is. Wow, that is crazy. Oh my God. Wow. I definitely want to hear you guys' comments about this. I, I, I'm, I'm flabbergasted. What I'll say is this. I think Ida definitely or Kirishima should replace Froppy. There's no way, man. Froppy is an annoying character. A lot of annoying utility. But they did kind of nerf her as well. But I guess the nerf wasn't enough, man. People are still popping off with Froppy. So let's go over the list, shall we? Sorry, guys. I had to cut. I had to take an important phone call. But we are back. And let's now tackle on the top four of this list and see what makes them the cream of the crop. So number four, we have Midoriya with a 19.22% win rate. Midoriya does have a lot of good utility on his kit. But I feel like, if anything, I think that Ida or Kirishima would be better than this character. But it's understandable because Midoriya is the main character as well. So it makes it to where that a lot of people are using him. So that high win rate could be due to the fact that just people are using this character more than the other characters that are in the game currently. And he is the starter character. Use him in the tutorial. So it makes it more comfortable for people to use this character than use other characters as well. But I digress. Let's continue on. So with his alpha skill, range attacks, definitely good to have. And before the beta... It would actually be more legitimate why he is on this list because with that alpha skill he was able to do a lot of damage still doing pretty good damage down but definitely not compared to how he was before the patch notes number two which is the gamma the black whip nice little combo starter because you could grab the opponent bring them close to you and then you could just use the beta right there or if you want you could just use your square combo as well and it makes it to where that it creates opportunity to get a little bit of damage in now i'm not a biggest fan of the beta but i could see a little bit of utility to make it to where that it does get the opponent off of you but then it makes it to where like let's say you get bakugo like more back it just creates an opportunity for him to make it to where that he is able to get more range so at that point you got to get close to bakugo and make sure that you are like in the position to where you have the advantage against him despite pushing him all the way back and another thing that makes this character clutch is just for the fact that i think it's the same thing with Ida. he just puts him on the back and then just gets out of the area where all the conflict is going on reses the ally and then you're just chilling for free and then you can just do whatever you want afterwards number three we got froppy another character who is able to revive and just has so much annoying utility in her kit the, let's talk about the, the alpha first, which is the tongue. The tongue goes very far, and it does some good damage. 
Next, we got the beta to make it to where that it creates this personal space for her on the ground so that nobody goes near her and she can spam it, I think, two to three times. I could be wrong. You froppy mains, let me know down below. And then in the air as well, she could use it to like go forward with the tongue. And I think it hits far, a little bit too far if you ask me. Because when you're doing it on the ground, it has wider range. But then with the air, it's like more longer range. I don't know. I could be wrong. I, I think if anything, maybe it's not that long as I'm thinking as it is. But I got hit with that one time and I was like, damn, man. What the hell? This is crazy. Froppy not only hits long with her alpha, but her beta too. Jesus Christ. And then another thing that comes clutch for her as well is definitely the invisibility. Even though they did nerf it, it's still a good thing to have to sneak behind your opponent and do a lot of damage. Or just sneak into the area where your allies died, take their cards, and just bounce for free before that does go away. So yeah, overall, Froppy annoying. Number two, we got my lady with a 20.11% win rate. I don't know if I said Froppy's win rate, but it is 19.90% win rate. But Mount Lady, we all know Mount Lady. We see her in the map every time when she goes big. It's just crazy what she is able to do. Her alpha, long range, crazy. The beta, I think it's where it's like the kick. When you're in gigantification with that kick, I know a good five people are gonna get hit for free with that. And then with her gamma, which makes it to where she does that butt slam, earthquake for free. There's like, if you are stuck in that area where she's doing the earthquake and you have no movement, goodbye. Half your health gone for free. So yeah, overall, this Mount Lady, I can understand definitely why she's at number two. The gigantification is crazy, and all the skills that she has in her kit, absolutely crazy when she does go gigantification. But without gigantification, again, the alpha is very good, and the gamma is very good. The beta, where it's a little bit iffy, is just similar to Medoya. Not really that useful, but unless you are big. And then number one, standing at a 21.68% win rate, we got All Might, the number one hero that. Which, I mean, again, this could be the same reason why for Midoriya, a lot of people are picking this character just because he is a very popular character. But All Might does have a lot of good utility. One with the alpha, the range alphas, awesome, all day long. And then two with the beta, which is the spit. No, is it the beta? No, 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 sorry. The beta just does a punch and then it does the tornado right after, which is inconsistent as hell, I'm not gonna lie. You're gonna be missing that the majority of the time, so if anything, you just forget that skill is there. But here's where he comes clutch, which is the damn gamma skill. The tornado that he does, oh my god. Range attacks don't hit him, close range attacks don't affect him at all. He's basically impervious to attacks, for a good while, especially when you max it out, man. You're just gonna be sitting there watching All Might doing his damn tornado, and you only got two options. Wait until he's done and stand from a far distance, or run away and let him cook. But sadly, you can't really run away from All Might like that because of his special action that makes it to where that he could jump super far and just make sure that he either reaches you fast or gets away from the fight fast. So, that's what makes it to where that All Might could be both a defensive character and a rapid character as well. He's just doing too many things on his kit. So with that, guys, we have basically the top 18 done. Again, you can let me know down below your personal list for the top four or what you would change from this top four to make it to where that, you know, this character should be here rather than this character or this character should be here rather than this character. So with that, I'll see y'all next time.